One of the most frequently asked questions within the FLL community is, why does my robot behave differently when I run the exact same program? Hi, I'm Jerry from the Laser Robotics, and then today I'll be explaining how we optimize our FLL robot's navigation for a smooth and consistent performance. This video will primarily focus on the hardware aspects of our robot navigation. We'll cover the software side in a separate video that will be released soon. I'll walk you through how our robot works and share some valuable tips we've learned along the way and discuss things that we wish we had known earlier. At the end, I'll reveal a lesser known tip that has helped us achieve maximum score points in the last two seasons. Here are our robots in the past two years. Both were built using the Spike Prime Hub and included several essential features. Let's begin with the robot size. In FLL, having a small robot like our Cargo Connect robot, which is a 15 by 15 stud square, could be advantageous. However, we learned from that season that a robot can be too small and unstable if the attachments are too big. An excessively small robot sacrifices stability during navigation. On the other hand, a massive robot provides more stability, but also compromises maneuverability in tight spaces. This year, our robot is a 17 by 18 square, which strikes a good balance between maneuverability and stability, considering our attachment size. This will be different for every robot, so it's up to your judgment with the size of your robot. Next, I'll briefly talk about the wheels of the robot. Finding the right balance between speed and stability is crucial. Larger wheels offer greater speed but compromise navigation stability due to motor backlash, while smaller wheels provide more stability but sacrifice speed. The choice of the front wheel is also important. You can choose between a ball bearing, which allows for easier turning but compromises straight line navigation, or a thin wheel, which may cause some drag while turning, but it helps the robot maintain a straight path while driving. Both options are very good, and it's up to you to decide which suits your needs. If I could redesign a robot, I would likely consider making changes to the front wheel to help the robot navigate in a straight line easier. Next, let's talk about the robot's shape. You want a robot that is easy to handle and well-balanced. Building a square-based robot, for example, has several advantages. It's easy to hold, aligns well in base, and it's easy to attach attachments to. It also allows for better alignment with the walls within the field, which allows the better to understand its position in the field and know where it is. I'll talk more about this in the next video with the software. Now, onto some small changes that have a significant impact on robot performance. First, you want to ensure that your wheel axles are properly supported to prevent bending, which can cause the wheels to deviate from their intended course. This is what an unsupported wheel would look like, and this is what a supported wheel would look like. Charging the robot's battery is also crucial. As the battery level decreases, the robot's performance gradually deteriorates. I recommend using the battery for up to two hours and then charging it. Using it for longer periods will significantly start to affect the robot's performance over time. Additionally, I also suggest cleaning the tires, especially if you're using Sprite Prime tires, as they tend to attract dust and other debris really, really easily. Cleaning them can ensure proper traction on the field, and pre which prevents tire slippage while navigating, and that can result in miscounted degrees or literally the robot getting stuck somewhere on the field, which you do not want to happen. Now let's discuss something that you can make to your attachments that will help your robot become even more consistent. We utilize various nav alignment tools which help us accurately line up with the base. Even if I slightly misalign the robot, the alignment tool can help correct and compensate for it. Here are a couple examples of what these tools might look like. Lastly, here is one of the most important tips we wish we had known earlier in our FLL career, weight distribution. If one side of the robot is heavier, it will cause the robot to skew to that side during navigation. Having excessive weight at the front reduces traction and accuracy in the driving wheels. We recommend distributing weight as much as possible on top of the wheels to maintain traction and minimize inaccuracies. The additional weight makes it more challenging for the attachment's weight to deviate the robot from its intended path. We implemented this change into our robot and immediately noticed a significant improvement, especially when using our heavy and big attachments. These are the weight parts that we use, but you can also use ball bearings in case you can't get your hands on those. These are some of the most impactful tips and tricks for FLL navigation on the hardware side. These tips have affected us and changed how our robot navigates over the past five years. I'll be releasing a separate video soon, focusing on the software side of the robot. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching.